One CNC CAD provides a very robust, straightforward, easy approach to creating geometry. You can use absolute coordinate input, incremental coordinate input, you can grid snap or reference off existing geometry. Now creating things like chamfers and fillets are also very simple. Just select the command, put the value in, and then digitize the geometry. We also have a set of can shapes. So for example, let's take a bolt hole pattern, stick it right at that arc center. That looks good. Let's create a couple of circles. Using our alter command, we can alter geometry. So we'll move that circle, and why don't we change the diameter as well. Now to rotate this, just select the geometry, select your point of rotation. I'll use a digital compass and rotate that 90 degrees. I can also grab the part by a theoretical intersection and move it right to origin. Very, very simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at some of our dimensioning tools. Let's add a couple of horizontal dimensions here. That looks great. We'll add a vertical dimension. That looks good. And how about a radial dimension? We also offer a set of cross-hatching tools. Just select the geometry, select your cross-hatch style, and click OK. Very, very simple. Now, if you'd like to work with solid models, you can start with primitives if you want, or you can take 2D geometry and extrude that. You can use a dimension to extrude it or just dynamically extrude. Let's use the Extrude Boss tool to create a boss, Extrude Cut to cut a hole. That looks good. And just like before, creating fillets and chamfers is very simple. Let's put a 250 thousandths fillet at the bottom of that boss. And how about a couple of chamfers? We'll make those 100 thousandths at the top of the boss and at the top of the circle or hole there. That looks great. Let's take this a step further. Let's use the shell command. Just digitize the faces you'd like to get rid of, and there's your shell. Now you can also use construction planes to create additional geometry on faces. So I'm going to grab that face. Let's create a circle here. I'll change the diameter to, let's say, 700 thousandths. Place the circle right on that face. Now if we want, we can use some of our extrude tools to take this further. We'll extrude cut that, and there we go. We have a circle cut right through there. Very, very simple and straightforward. Now let's take a look at surfaces. We offer a great set of surface tools as well. Very robust. Let's start with a four edge. Now the four edge surface is where you digitize four edges to create a surface. That looks good. Digitize that edge and that edge. That looks great. So there's your first surface. How about we take a look at the surface from curves command. This is where you just digitize a boundary, right hand mouse click, and there's your surface. Now we'll use cross sectional. This is where you digitize several cross sections. Now I'm only selecting two, but you can select as many cross sections as you'd like. And there you go. There's your first cross sectional surface. Let's do that again on this side here. That looks good. Right hand mouse click and there's the surface. Now notice here this top edge is made up of more than just one edge. That's not a problem. The bottom shape just has one edge, but no problem. There's our next cross-sectional surface. Again, there's multiple edges on top. Not a problem. We'll grab the single edge on the bottom and there's our surface. Now if you'd like, you can combine surfaces. So let's do that. Let's use our merge tool. There we go. So that's one watertight model now. I'll go back to our extrude tools and how about we extrude a tapered hole through that. That looks great. I'm going to use the fillet command and this time why don't we fill it all the edges. Put 150 thousandths radius on that. Digitize the model and there's all your fillets. That looks good. Now we also offer a very powerful set of parting tools. I'm just going to use the standard split job command and let's split this model two inches. So we'll click OK and there's the split. Very very simple. Now in this example, I'd like to show you how you can create blueprints from 3D models. We're going to use our add page, we'll select a template, and then what you do is you select your view and then just place the view on the page. Here's a front view. How about an isometric? That looks good. Great. Now let's go back to the model space. And what we're going to do now is take a cross section right there and say add to page manager. What we're going to do is create a cross-sectional view. Now if we go back to the page manner, notice there's a new view there called section 1. We'll say place on page and there you go. Now what you do now if you'd like is you can just use our standard dimensioning tools to carry on. So I'll put a couple of vertical dimensions in. And let's put another one right there. And how about a radial dimension? But you can see the workflow is very constant and very easy. Another really powerful thing is that this uh, page space is associative to your model space. Let me demonstrate. Let's get rid of one of these holes. That looks good. So the hole's gone. Let's go back to our page space now. And let's use the update page. And there you go. All four views now have been updated to show just one hole. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.